Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and today we are doing a one year update on my Ikea Millspo cabinet. <laughs> okay, so also Caseify is sponsoring this video, more on them later. Okay, so this cabinet has been my saving grace. Honestly, if you are considering getting one, just do it because I was going back and forth for a little bit and it did take me a while to actually locate one. I had to drive to St. Louis to do it and I've made videos throughout the entire, you know, year, year and some change that I've had the cabinet because I think that I got it last March and it's now June when I'm filming this. But anyway, basically it's been a year and I just did a TikTok showing my Anthurium from one year ago to now and some of them truly look so, so different and so much better and it is because of this cabinet. So if you struggle with those high humidity plants, plants that need a lot of light, a lot of humidity, um, I would definitely suggest getting some sort of closed in cabinet like these ones. Ikea has a few different models. The Rudsta is pretty popular, but I have the Millsbo. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you the plants and just sort of talk about, you know, what they looked like when I put them in and what they look like now and any changes that I've made to the cabinet during the process to make it better. So first I have to say that not every plant that was in here originally is still in here. And I have sort of changed the layout a bit because these grow lights up here are very, very strong and having a plant super close to it, plants get bleached out, they get burnt and yeah, it's just like very intense. So I've had to be careful about keeping plants further away from the light, which I don't exactly love. Like I'd love to be able to have plants closer to it while also letting these plants get plenty of light. Um, these ones are definitely getting quite a bit of light even being so far away from the light because it is so intense but even like being at this height like that's like maybe a, a foot foot and a half away from the lights those still get bleached out a little bit so anyway i've had to do a little bit of adjustment in that the bottom is sort of constantly rotating through plants i definitely don't have the same plants in here at the bottom that i did before besides my anthurium clarinervium she is still in there and i think that she's gonna live in this cabinet forever honestly i don't really see a time when i'm going to take it out because it is just so happy in there when i put it in the cabinet it was looking so scraggly it just, it looked terrible and now it looks so freaking good. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine removing it, honestly. So, okay, we're gonna open it up. Oh, and I just remembered the fans are on. So I'm gonna turn off the fans so that the sound is a bit better. But I will say these little fans have been amazing. I will have them linked down below if you're interested. I think that I got them on Amazon um, last year and I have two of them and they've been so great to keep the air moving in here. I have one up here and one down here because this is the original Millsbo glass shelf so there's no like airflow between the layers and so having these in here running constantly for a year literally every single day for a year they have been running and they are still <laughs> going like that's honestly insane to me i thought that i'd have to like replace them eventually and the reason that you want the fan is so that the air is circulating there's certain rules around how much space the plant is living in and how quickly the air needs to be recycled and moved i don't know exactly what it is like on a small scale like this these two fans have been fine but like for my greenhouse outside i do have to get like a certain amp or watt not not wattage that's light but i do need to get the specific <laughs> fan with a specific amount of power um, and ability to move air at a certain rate again i don't know exactly what the ratio is but anyway i'm figuring that out <laughs> so yeah these fans have been really awesome and i suggest that you have one for each layer of your greenhouse cabinet even if you do have the shelves with holes in them because i've seen a few etsy sellers uh, come out with some whole things like whole shelves um, I'd still suggest getting two fans because it is a big space and if you have a lot of plants in there there's not a lot of airflow anyway and when they're in this cabinet right here it's completely stagnant so you definitely want to make sure you have a way for the air to move that is the fan. I'm gonna turn them off now that I finished talking about them. For anybody curious who hasn't seen this before I have a smart plug down there it's a mess of cords so it's not very pretty but i have a smart plug and there it is so i can just click that and turn off these lights i can also have a timer set so as you can see these lights will turn off at 7 p.m and they turn on at 5 a.m and they've been doing that for the entire year that i've had this 
I never even have to think about the lights or the fans. So it's really awesome. The fans run 24 seven, like I said, that's why they don't have any sort of like timer on them. And this is really awesome. Like you can see when I click it, it turns on When I click it, it turns off. So definitely suggest getting a smart power strip for your Millsbow greenhouse or just your greenhouse cabinet in general. It has saved my life. This video is sponsored by Casetify, so let's have a little chat about them. So if you are not familiar with Casetify, I've worked with them a bunch on my channel, but basically they make my favorite phone cases and I'm absolutely obsessed with them. Unfortunately, I have dropped my phone from like 12, 13 feet lately because I've been working on the greenhouse and the phone has taken a spill or two onto like rocks. So unfortunately, it's cracked. And because of that, I'm going to switch to the Ultra Impact case because it has these nice bumpers here, which makes it drop tested approved up to 9.8 feet. And while I'm switching to the Ultra Impact case, I'm also going to switch out my screen protector. So while I switch that out, I'm gonna tell you more about Case Defy. Case Defy's new impact and ultra impact cases are made of 65% recycled and plant-based materials, and they're also compatible with 5G and wireless charging. You can check out their print options, but you can also get a customized case with like your initials or a phrase that you really like. It's really nice. These cases are also 100% non-toxic and non-hazardous, and they feature an antimicrobial coating that keeps your case germ-free, killing 99% of bacteria. Okay, I feel so much better now that my phone is in the Ultra Impact case. Hopefully I don't do any more damage to it before I can get it fixed. But anyway, thank you so much to Casetify for sponsoring this video. And if you are interested in checking out a Casetify case, you can head to casetify.com slash plants to get 15% off your order. I hope you enjoy it and I will uh, see you in the part of the video where we are filming the video. <laughs> Another piece of tech that I suggest and will stand by for having in here is my humidity meter. This is a hydrometer. It's not like a super nice one. I probably bought this on Amazon. I'll link it down below if you're interested. And it just tells me what the humidity is in the space and then the temperature. So typically the temperature in here is a little bit warmer than the rest of my house. My house usually sits about 70 degrees, but because of these lights, it is a lot warmer. So the, the lights definitely keep it warm. I didn't have to do any sort of like heating mat or anything like that in the winter time. And the humidity in here, I don't have any sort of humidifier or fountain or any sort of water source in here. It just depends on how humid my home is honestly and how humid it is outside because it can range from, you know, 50% humidity. It's been open, so the humidity has obviously dropped. The lowest it'll go is probably around 50, because that's how, you know, that's how dry we keep our house. But the highest I've seen it is like 80%, and it'll, it sort of fluctuates, like in the morning it'll be more humid, at night it'll be less humid. I would say the ideal humidity in here would be 70 to 75%. That is when I see the most progress and growth, but in general, it is pretty easy to keep the humidity up. In the winter time, it was a little bit more difficult because obviously it was really dry. So what I did was I put in a little diffuser in here and I would run that like for a couple of hours. It honestly wasn't the best situation. Like I probably should have put in like a water feature that was running constantly, but at the time I really didn't have space to do that. And now I probably do have space to do something like that down here. So anyway. I noticed that with that um, diffuser, if I put it down here at the bottom, the humidity would rise and it would come into this area too because the hydrometer was up here and it would register the humidity even though the humidity was coming from down here. So just a hot tip for anybody who's using the glass shelves and is wondering if humidity will rise. It definitely will. So I'm trying to think of what plants I had in here originally. Definitely my Anthurium were all in here originally. So this is an Anthurium Doriaki. That was definitely in here. My Crystallinum was always in here. Um, what I'm noticing is my Anthurium are much, much happier, especially when the humidity is super high. Of course, that isn't like, like new news by any means. Like Anthurium really love humidity. My Alocasia are really doing super well in here. This is my Alocasia Black Velvet. And then I have an Alocasia Maharani back here. These ones would probably benefit from being closer to the light because Alocasia actually do like being in high light situations. I used to use these clips a lot when I had plants in like plastic nursery pots. But now that most of these plants are potted in ceramic or terracotta, I really don't have use for those clips anymore because they're not strong enough to hold onto a 
ceramic or terracotta pot. I do have this one still in the plastic and it's doing really well. It's putting off a lot of babies. I think it has like maybe three new pieces that are growing in, which is really exciting, but I have had to bottom water it with this pot. Um, and it definitely needs like a soil top off. But anyway, up here on these shelves, I highly suggest these shelves. I wish they were a little bit deeper because pretty much the biggest type of plant you could put in here, or the biggest pot you can put in here is probably like a three inch pot, maybe. So I just have these little food containers that have some propagations in them. But I had this shelf up like maybe right here before. And again, it was just like way too intense. So I moved that down. And then this is my queen anthurium, which I had in here. It lost its original leaf, put out a new leaf, and then the new leaf died. And we do have something growing in. You, you can see there's a bit, little bit of green in there. And that is a new leaf spike. So hopefully that will come out and we will finally reach a point where this plant is happy. My forgettii looks pretty much the same as it did previously, like a year ago, which kind of sucks. I really wish that this plant was happier. I just wanted to share that not everything is going to be a total transformation. I do think this is still the best place for this plant to live because of the humidity. I recently put in this begonia in here, which it was actually trying to die on me, but I caught it. I caught it trying to die on me, <laughs> but I went on vacation and I didn't really think about it. Uh, but begonias really like a lot of humidity, especially this one. This one's a little bit of a pill, I've heard, but it's so beautiful, so it feels worth it. So it is putting out a bunch of new leaves now that it's been in here. And it's just really nice to have this space to rehab plants, mostly. Like that is mostly what I use this for, is like when I get a plant in the mail, like this one, for example, this was sitting in my P.O. box for like a couple weeks and I just did not see the message on Instagram of the person giving me like the tracking information. And so, yeah, I got a message like last night and they were like, hey, did you get the plant? And I was like, oh shoot, I'm just now seeing all of these messages. So I went and checked my P.O. box and it looks pretty good, but it definitely is going to need some recovery with some good lighting. So I have it under, you know, this grow light obviously. But yeah, I've treated this cabinet mostly as my space to rehab plants. And a lot of the plants have lived in here like since the beginning, but a lot of plants will only be in here for a brief amount of time and then I'll move them out. And another added benefit of this greenhouse cabinet is when a plant has fungus gnats in here, it's all contained. Like I can just close this and I know that those fungus gnats are going to live and die in this cabinet completely. I don't have to worry about them infecting the rest of my home. Although, you know, I do have fungus gnats outside of the cabinet as well, but in here, I'm more likely to get a fungus gnat infestation because it is so like moist and warm, exactly what they're looking for, you know? So anytime I notice that that's happening, I'll start watering with a systemic and that usually clears up the issue within like a few weeks. Something else with this greenhouse cabinet is I started watering it a lot more often within like the last six months. And when I started doing that, like the growth just shot up. It was absolutely insane to me how different the growth was or how more, how much more often I was seeing new growth with the more consistent watering schedule. So probably about every five days, I'll take everything out, at least from this top section, and I will water it in the sink with my little watering tray. And then the things down here will get watered every other watering because they are bigger pots and they hold moisture for a bit longer. I really wanna show you my Clara Nervium and just talk about her transformation because she has really, really just changed so much. This new leaf is very big, like in comparison to the other leaves that it's put out before. You can just see the size difference there. I mean, it's just so cool to see this plant like have a total transformation from being in the cabinet and it has so many leaves. You can see more back there and the leaves are just like all around like in a circle formation. It's super nice. It is blooming like all the time. I've been able to collect pollen from it and it's actually blooming again right now. So I just recently collected pollen from this flower right here. So I'm going to try pollinating it and see what happens. I will keep you updated on that process because I collected that pollen like just a few weeks ago, so it's pretty fresh. And then this is my Bilia TA that I got from Adam. 
and it wasn't doing anything for a long time and then I had it in the cabinet and we got this new leaf, which I mean, isn't the most impressive leaf, but it is, um, it was like a mid cutting, so it wasn't a top cutting. So it's kind of starting over with like leaf size, but we have another leaf coming out pretty soon, which is gonna be super exciting. So I just love that I have this space to rehab plants as needed and uh, just take care of them. I wanted to take a minute to talk about the weather stripping on the greenhouse cabinet because this was a big point of stress for me. <laughs> like keeping the humidity inside of the cabinet was really hard, especially over the winter, like I said. So this is the weather stripping that I used. Eh. There just happens to be a dead fungus gnat right where I lifted it, that's great. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, this is the weather stripping. I will put um, the product picture on the screen from when I bought it, but yeah, it is held up pretty well. I mean, I will say it's like not very sticky anymore, like especially on this side, it just kind of like wants to come off. So I feel like I do need to replace that, but I don't know exactly. I mean, I have sort of put like beads of glue underneath it and then pushed it back, but it just moves a lot because the door is constantly hitting it so and also like if you open the door too wide it sort of lifts it sometimes oh yeah look up here it like moves it if you open the door too wide so it's just like maybe not the best thing but i, I this was what i saw most people using so it's kind of hard to know like if it's the fault of the weather stripping or if it's just you know wear and tear and it needs to be replaced this year but as far as sealing it up in other ways, there was some gaps up here, which I actually sealed up just with some like hot glue. I guess you could use something a little bit more technical like <laughs> um, caulking or something like that, but I just sealed them up with some hot glue and that seemed to do the trick for that problem. So I was pretty happy with that. Corkboard itself has held up pretty nicely. There is a corner down here that like when it arrived to me, it was kind of broken and we did have some mold growth over here but I just wiped it off and I haven't had any since then. So I definitely just like, you know, give it a like a wash or once over wash every once in a while. And it's held up pretty nicely. And then also down here where I cut the hole, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, it's just like kind of peeking out. I didn't seal it after I cut the hole or after Daniel cut the hole, which is probably a mistake because it's rusted now. So um, this is the only place where I have rust on my on my Mills bow. And I think it's just because the paint was rubbed off from the drill. So if you are going to be doing this, definitely put some sort of sealant on it if that matters to you. I never put my hands back here, so it's not really the biggest deal, but obviously I'm aware that it rusted. Okay, so the last thing that I want to discuss in regards to my IKEA greenhouse cabinet is pests. So I thought that by having this cabinet with the high humidity, like the plants being like super happy and also the plants just in general being isolated in there, I thought that I wouldn't have any issues with spider mites or pests. I mean, fungus gnats, uh, fungus gnats are fungus gnats. They're, they're gonna pop up all the time. But I was really surprised when I got spider mites in there, um, even after I hadn't really introduced new plants in there. And I will say that the plants in this cabinet all touch each other a lot like there's a lot of mingling and if you are trying to prevent spider mite infections I would really suggest not having your plants touching each other before I really knew about spider mites I would have all of my plants just like clustered together really tightly and then I had an infestation that almost killed everything in my collection and I lost quite a few of plants because I was just like I cannot deal with this. So ever since then, I've had very strict rules about my plants not touching each other, especially ones that would be hard to get rid of certain pests, like my Hoya compacta does not touch other plants. It like rarely, rarely ever touches another plant, even when I'm watering it. So with that being said, spider mites and other pests, I've heard of people having thrips. Your Millsbow does not make your plants invincible and you can definitely still struggle with spider mites, thrips, mealybugs, all of these things, especially because it is such a tight space and the plants are most likely going to be touching each other. Also something that's nice though, is if you wanted to do something like integrated pest management, it would be a lot easier because I know that like for me at least, the thought of doing integrated pest management is like, that makes sense, that's a good idea. But the thought of having bugs, like more bugs flying around my house isn't exactly appealing. So having plants like in a closed container like this makes that more appealing for me. And I think I am going to try to do something um, next time I find spider mites, just, you know, toss some stuff in there that'll eat spider mites. 
Um, probably will be doing some beneficial nematodes just to like try it out for the fungus gnats because fungus gnats are always going to be an issue for me as it is for most people. It's very normal. So I kind of want to just like experiment and try new things and see what happens. But yeah, that's definitely a big piece of advice that I wish that I heard before I bought my cabinet was that your plants can still definitely get pests and to be regularly checking them. Um, just because they are in this closed environment doesn't mean that you're going to be able to just like leave them to their own devices. You definitely need to be watering them, especially because the plants in here are probably going to be smaller plants. Even though it is very humid in there, the soil is still going to be drying out. For me, it dries out really fast because the lights are so intense in there and the plant is constantly working on something, whether it's root growth or new leaves. Um, I'm always seeing new leaves in there year round which is really really awesome i think for the future like when i am having troubles with humidity like in the winter time i am going to make room to have a fountain in there like a cute little plug-in fountain that i can have running all the time i've seen a lot of people do that and it helps with their humidity a ton since it is such a small space you don't really need to do anything too intense the diffuser that i was using before was a little bit too intense like i needed something a little bit more Passive. I don't really know what exactly the word would be, but I needed something that wouldn't be so intense because I could only have the diffuser on for a few minutes because the entire thing would be like a, like a cloud forest. Like you could not even see the plants, <laughs> which is cool, but also like you don't want, um, well, I just didn't want that much moisture in there because it just was a bit excessive and it would cause a lot of like dripping and things like that. So I do think that my cabinet needs a deep clean like where I take like um, not chemicals but you know like Windex or I guess Windex is chemicals but you know what I mean <laughs> I give it a deep clean the glass um, all of that kind of stuff to get rid of like all the streaks and marks on it because it definitely needs it I will probably be doing that in a plant chores video very soon so stay tuned on that but I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to say. I don't know, if you are a person who has a lot of sensitive plants and you maybe live in Arizona, for example, or somewhere where it's like not very humid and it's kind of hard to keep those you know, more difficult or more needy plants in your space, definitely look into something like this. I have considered, <laughs> because I'm gonna have my big greenhouse out in my yard, I've considered downgrading to the short version of the Mills bow so that I can have just like, I don't know, it doesn't feel necessarily cramped, but I kind of am like wanting the short one so that I can put like a little drink station on top of it because I like making like chai in the morning and it might be cute to have like a little tea and drink station or something like that or just like a place to put a photo. I don't know, I'm kind of wanting to maybe look into getting the shorter one and maybe selling this one on marketplace or something but you know what i think the shorter one is wider and i don't know if i'm gonna have enough space so i need to do some research because with my greenhouse being almost finished i am going to be able to put plants out there and i'd like for a lot of my plants to go into the greenhouse especially the ones that i'm rehabbing because it'll be super humid like hopefully lots of light perfect environment for them like it'll be like this except like way bigger so yeah, I'm interested to see how my indoor plants will sort of shift outside when the big greenhouse is done and if I'll even have use for this anymore. I mean, at the end of the day, it is very beautiful and if I don't end up using it for like rehabbing plants, at the very least, I will use it to display certain plants that I think are really beautiful, sort of like a planty china cabinet or something like that because honestly the mills boat is a very beautiful piece of furniture so even if at one point you i don't know for some reason you don't want to do plants anymore or you lose your fire and you like want less plants i still think it would be very useful just to like display your pretty plants and have a space to show them off so anyway that is all I have to say for this video. So I hope that you enjoyed a little one year review and um, assessment of all of the things that I bought for the cabinet. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave them down below. I'm happy to answer your questions and help you out as you you know, search for your Mills bow. If you're not already, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel and uh, follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you wanna see more De La Plants planty content. We have a lot of fun on the internet, on my little corner of the internet. Um, I'd say it's a fun place, <laughs> so I'd love for you to hang out. All right, you guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.